Oh. Cassette Master in association with Smoke Detector Productions presents to you the Akai Tear Recorder Standard. And with complete with broken handle. The other piece is long gone. When I acquired it, the handle was already like that. This recorder, I actually already have a video on YouTube of. But there are some drawbacks of that video. The reason why I'm making a new video of this recorder is not because I used the lower quality camera to record it but it was simply because of the condition the recorder was in at the time. The, re the video was done um, in 2008, seven years ago, and back then I had, didn't, the, uh, this recorder had a problem where the recording, uh, where the recording was very distorted. Um, the problem was with the bias oscillator. Actually, the problem was basically my fault because, okay, I replaced a bunch of capacitors in this recorder. At that time, I hadn't replaced all the uh, the filter capacitors, but I replaced some of the lower voltage electrolytics and um, a lot of the low value capacitors. Well, I'd put the wrong value capacitors in for the bias, even though I had the schematic on the back. And I think it had to do with some weird deal with not being able to measure bias voltage. Today, I was, or recently, I was in a, well, yesterday, I was in a very wire recordery mood, one could say. And I tried working on uh, a Webster Chicago and, and, and a Steno by Crescent wire recorder to try to get strange bias problems with them fixed to no avail. In that mood, I also wanted to work on this recorder. So today, I worked on this recorder. And it's a very neat machine. The original head cover's missing. Um, but anyway, I decided to work on this recorder because I wanted to fix that problem. Anyway, it was basically as simple as putting the original specified values in that were specified on the schematic. 0.001 microfarads across the bias coil and a 0.005 microfarad capacitor going to from the coil to a couple resistors. What's this? Okay. Yeah. So, one might ask why um, did I have the wrong values on there? Before I had a picofarad range variable capacitor on the bias coil and a 0.0068 where the 0.005 went. That probably wasn't the problem. The problem was probably with having the picofarad range variable capacitor on there. Whenever it's supposed to be 0.001 microfarads. So, um, which probably made the frequency way, way, way too high. And it recorded with a whole lot of distortion in the bass. And also some treble distortion as well as just very shrill sounding and very strange. Um, but whenever I had it apart and I would power the machine up, I had the right value and I also replaced the filter electrolytics while I was at it. And I actually ended up putting some of those photo flash 160 and 120 microfarad capacitors in um, that came out of disposable cameras because I didn't have any um, much other high voltage. I had like three... 10 microfarad 450 volt electrolytics on me and a, and a 4.7 microfarad 200 volt electrolytic on me. Those are basically my only high voltage electrolytics aside from the photo flash ones from disposable cameras. The original filters had a couple of the 60 microfarad capacitors and then I had a 40 microfarad. But um... I discovered a couple of interesting things. One is, whenever I put the new filter capacitors in, I got a problem where there was a whole lot of hum, which wasn't there before. And I even tried hooking an alligator clip up to the chassis ground and touching a capacitor to where I had temporarily disconnected one of the filter capacitors. 
When I'd apply the capacitor, the hum would be worse. And it seemed to be the reverse of what would make sense. Add another filter capacitor and you get more hum, not less. When one would think it should filter it more. Well, what was happening, I believe, was ground loops. I plan to do a little bit more research on ground loops after I make this video. But probably a lot of you have heard of ground loops, especially with hooking up television equipment, maybe, to watch a movie. And you have this, you plug in, say, a PlayStation 3 or something, it has a, a grounded plug, and all of a sudden you get this annoying hum. Well, anyway, it was that kind of thing that happened, because whenever I replaced the electrolytics, I had put several of the grounds in different locations. They were all ground, but grounded at different physical points on the chassis, you know, for convenience. And so then I decided, well, after having the hum problem, I wondered if it was ground loops, so I, I put the the grounds of the capacitors I replaced, I put the, the I grounded them in the spots where they originally were grounded and the hum problem was fully fixed. So it was not some strange thing about filtration. It was obvious it was it was the ground loops that was a problem. The bias oscillator though was a very strange thing. On the schematic, it would specify to read 60 to 80 volts of bias at the output going into the head. Well, I put my voltmeter on. AC mode, I get like 1.2, 1.3 volts. I go after the, um, the capacitor where it goes to the head, and I get nothing at all. And I go to check the frequency, and I get nothing and it seemed like the bias oscillator wasn't working at all. Then I went ahead and thought, you know, I, I tried twice putting different of the same, of the right value capacitors in. You know, I'm just going to flip the machine over and do a test recording. So I did a test recording pessimistically saying that it's not going to erase and it's going to sound extremely distorted. And lo and behold, the machine came in with good sound quality and recording properly and not distorted like it used to be in the video in 2008, the bias oscillator was working just fine. So what I'm thinking eh, must be, and from experience, experience with some other recorders, I'm thinking what it is is the current available from the bias oscillator must be extremely small. So small that putting the meter across it to measure it which was a digital voltmeter, probably had several mega ohms of impedance, was probably low enough, believe it or not, resistance to short the bias oscill or to, to load it down to zero. Um, because the bias oscillator was working fine. Now, perhaps if I'd used a VTVM, I didn't, I didn't try this. I do have a VTVM, though. If I were to use a VTVM, chances are maybe I could have. Uh, got the voltage, but I, I'm not sure. But anyway, what I'm thinking is I, is I couldn't measure the voltage um, because I, it was the meter itself was probably loading down the bias oscillator such that every time I went to measure it, I got what seemed like it wasn't working, when indeed it actually was. And now, going back to why I put the wrong value capacitors, I don't fully remember why I put them on, but I suppose I must have measured it with the meter then and got nothing and thought it wasn't working and went ahead and put those values until I guess I got something on the meter. So, anyway, the original values are in there for the bias. Machine is working well now. And now, after almost 10 minutes of talking without even once showing operation, I will do some recording tests. Also, this used to have an extremely horrendously annoying <coughs> problem, like I just move it around, I'd bump it, and it would just be crackling and just going crazy, and I don't remember exactly what was causing that problem. It might have been a tube socket connection on a tube, or um, I I'm not, don't remember for sure, but I did manage to fix that at some point since making the video in 2008. So, 
And also, I think if I remember correctly, back, back, back whenever I made that video, the level lights didn't always work, so I couldn't tell what the recording level was. But now the level lights work beautifully. They're neons. So I get a good view here. Let's see if I can get it better with the light. The output, input. It's neat because the input is a dual function input and you can switch it between mic and line. Tone and volume. I should spray the tone knob. I didn't, but it's not really that important. Um, so you can see how the lights are there. It's very nice. I can do it all the way up and easily overdrive it. So I just want to show that. it's really. I really like the looks of this recorder. Some might not like the look. Some might think it looks too plain. But something about, like, I love the color gray and just the, the plain the look of it, the gray color. I think the gray color really looks awesome, actually. I really like gray. Um, so, this is a, not the original to this recorder, but this is a Anakai microphone. It was, when I acquired this microphone, it already had this stuff missing from it, so don't think I tore those off and, and lost them. Okay. This unit is running at three and three fourths inches per second and probably picking up all kinds of noise of the the whirling because oh yeah, not to mention I also replaced the belt on this back in two thousand eight or possibly two thousand I don't remember if I got if I originally acquired this in two thousand eight or late two thousand seven. I made the video of it in February two thousand eight. But anyway. I would have probably made it shortly after acquiring it. It was given to me by a brother in the church. Sent to me in the mail and I was very happy whenever I received it. Let me pause this phone. Well, I have made a number of recordings on this recorder. Or, I made lengthy recordings, let's put it that way, on this recorder. Which I will play back for your listening pleasure. Let us play it back. This is the moment you've all been waiting for after over 12 minutes. This unit is running at three to four inches per second and probably picking up all kinds of noise as of the rolling because, oh yeah, not to mention I also replaced the belt on this back in 2008 or possibly 2000. I don't remember if I got if I originally acquired this in 2008 or late 2007. I made the video of it in February 2008. But anyway, I would have probably made it shortly after acquiring it. It was given to me by a brother in the church. Sent to me in the mail and I was very happy whenever I received it. Let me pause this phone. Okay, so... I'm now speaking up close to the mic. I have the uh, phone camera uh, currently paused. The original rubber rollers on this recorder are dry with age, so it tends to be rather noisy when it runs, especially when it's rewinding. It's just crazy noisy. Hey, how? Uh, quit. But it still works well enough to work. Um. So we're running at three and three fourths inches per second. I know this is a long, drawn-out video. If someone really wants to watch this video, then you know they gotta be patient. They gotta be able to sit down and watch a tape recorder demonstration. Of course, if anyone's going to, out there is going to actually click and watch a tape recorder demonstration, then I assume they'd actually want to watch the whole thing, because probably most typical people out there don't just want to watch someone show a tape recorder operating unless they're interested in vintage tape recorders. So, anyway, this is, the level is set at near three, but not quite. Let's set the level up higher. Well, I'm still speaking up close, we're now overdriving the system so you can hear how it sounds distorted from overdriving. <coughs> that was an overdriven burp. <coughs> that was another overdriven burp. Let's set this mic down now. And now it's picking up good at a distance, at a little bit past five on the on the um, volume knob. That 
the other is set up by the way. It is ever driving as I'm speaking in a normal voice. I can whisper and it will pick up my voice as I whisper. And I imagine you can... So that was a 3G force demonstration. Now uh, get your capstan sleeve ready because we're going to bump this thing up to seven and a half. So we're going to get our capstan sleeve and. Ah, uh, correction. It's a blurry capstan sleeve. Stick that guy on there. And run the recorder. We are now running it at seven and one half inches, half inches, seven and one half inches per second. Boy. Um, unfortunately, though, this machine does not have any provision for changing the equalization when changing speeds. Also, another important, some important tidbits I'd like to mention. Um, don't quote me on this year-wise. But I think it was 1971, and this is not for the year this machine is from, but this is something I'm going to touch on here. You can look it up on the internet and find out this information, but I think the information was found from the uh, Phantom uh, Phantom something site where there's like a whole bunch, like Phantom Productions, I think, is like a whole bunch of just studio tape recorders and stuff in a, in a, in a collection. But, um... Is that, can I overdrive? Okay, making sure the light still works. So, the Akai machines, um, of course, is a Japanese company, Akai Electric Company. And this recorder here came out in 1959, and on the inside there was uh, stamped 11, oh no, there was stamped 6011, 6011 inside, which I believe is a, probably a date code for. 60 or 1960 11th week so if that is a date code this that would make this particular one from 1960 but from looking on the internet this recorder apparently uh, is originally from 1959 and of course in the video in 2008 i had assumed it was from the early 50s and very rare but it's probably not really that rare so i was wrong on both those parts anyway The interesting thing to mention is that many of you have probably heard of the Roberts real real tape recorders, but of course could easily see that the Roberts recorders are obviously a Kai. There doesn't seem to be any original Roberts recorders. They all seem to be a Kai recorders branded as Roberts. And from reading on the Phantom Production site, there was some agreement that Roberts had back in the day with a Kai, and that a Kai would not um, export their machines to the United States directly or as a Kai, but that Roberts would work with the Kai, and that the Roberts, um, the, the under the Roberts brand, a Kai recorders could be sold, some, something like that. So that, and I think it was up until 1971, and I think it was in 1971 when finally they started sending a Kai, like actual a Kai, a Kai recorders. Akai branded recorders to the U.S., which leads me to believe that this recorder was likely acquired in Japan. And one thing that really, really uh, makes it even stronger that this recorder must have been acquired in Japan and not any other country outside of the U.S. is that this recorder is set for 100 volts. The schematic specifies 100 volts on the input. The motor specifies 100 volts and the output of the power transformer is specified to be 150 volts and upon measuring with my voltmeter I was getting 168 volts out a little bit more than it should be but luckily the tubes and everything are, are surviving even though they're being a little bit overvolted I don't have a variac unfortunately otherwise I'd run this through a variac set to 100 volts so, no other country that I know of uses just 100 volts. It's either 120 
or there or around there, like 110 maybe, or 125, or 240, or around there, like 230 or so, or 220. But this machine is set to run at 100 volts. It does not have anything to switch the frequency, although the motor specifies 50 to 60 hertz. And also, also I replaced the motor run capacitor, just to mention. And there is no voltage selector whatsoever. And also from seeing a uh, picture online, the AC cord currently on this machine is not the original. I don't know why the thing had been replaced. I saw a short YouTube video of this model online earlier today when I searched it, and there was a little plug plugged into where it says AC line. I don't know why they replaced that, because the plugs are the same. But anyway, you know, the plugs in Japan are compatible with plugs, sockets in the U.S. But anyway, the fact that this isn't a Kai-branded one and not, you know, Roberts, for example... Combined, especially the biggest telltale sign is 100 volt means this recorder must have originally been bought in Japan and at some point had been taken to the United States. Anyway, and then if that is the case about the whole thing about the Akai and Roberts machines, I am quite surprised about how, how many Akai recorders I have acquired that are actually branded Akai, not Roberts. I've only acquired one Roberts machine, which is in horrible shape and is just a parts machine. And I've acquired quite a few pre-1971, I'm pretty sure, or at least several of uh, Akai machines. So, I guess I got lucky on those. I guess they were acquired probably by people during the war or something. I know one of them for sure was acquired by a veteran the Akai M5, which I have still yet to fully restore, but I need to one day. It really deserves it, and it's an amazing cosmetic shape. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this long, drawn-out, time-wasting recording. I'm guessing I'm just in one of those moods where I'm just talking about my recorder, you know, and wasting everyone's time. Anyway... I hope you, oh yeah, and I could do some uh, higher level recordings at seven and a half just to see how it is. Anyway, it's, it's great to finally have this machine's bias working right, to finally have this recorder working right. It's fantastic. <clears throat> seven and a half IPS, not overdriven burp. It's really awesome, especially considering that it would have like been bought in Japan, probably set for 100 volts only, you know, like a true Japanese tape recorder. That just adds to the awesomeness of this classic machine. Oh. Next, I will show how recorded music. First at three and two fourths, then seven and one halves. This will take a little while. I recorded it earlier. I could have shot this at my workbench slash computer area in my regular bedroom, but I decided I'd rather shoot it over here with this nice fluorescent lights and nice area. This is technically the laundry room, but I've been using it as my bedroom because it's the bed construct at, in my regular bedroom is the bed is up on top of the workbench like a bunk bed and it's not so comfortable and it's not, it's more of a hassle to get up there. Oh yeah, it's slow scan TV. Um, oh yeah, sometimes I can beat it if I go fast enough with that. But there we go. Okay, yeah, I should get that off. So I have this laundry room is big enough to be a bedroom as well, so it's being used as a bedroom. Because this, this bed is so comfortable. This video is pretty long. But, yep. Geese gang. Oh. Geese gang. Geese gang. Let's turn this thing up. This is not the recording I meant to go to, but... Okay. 
following is a musical recording test performed at three and three four inches per second. You'll be astounded by how few views this song has. This is the name of both songs I used on here. original this recorder would have had another one of these plastic rollers there and a head cover like this and it's like uh, actually I think it says standard here and then there's some little symbol here from when I looked at a picture online. But the original head cover's long gone. So, let me uh, whip out the capstan sleeve here. Oh, seven and one half inches per second musical test. This recorder is quite strong on the mids. I apologize if the uh, cell phone audio recording is this is uh, distorted, it's clipped. It's tone. I need to should have sprayed this pot. And then that was a test recording I made at the, earlier on in the video. So that's the Akai two recorder standard. And there it is again without any reel. Rewind as noisy as it is because of the dry rubber. Fast forward as quieter as it is. Play clutch mechanism. And the very classic, famous Akai transport sound that many of you out there who have Akai recorders with this transport probably recognize. Don't you just love that sound? They all have that same sound. It's very uh, noticeable. I was listening to a reel from some reels that someone gave me that they had found um, like at a garage sale or being thrown out or something. I think it was from a garage sale. Yet no recorder. And I was listening to one of the tapes and I figured it might have been recorded on an Akai recorder because it had that characteristic, I mean the characteristic sound in the background. It had that same sound. I figured it must have been an Akai. Anyway. 
I really like this recorder. Very pleased to finally have it working, recording good. I really like these knobs, like just the way it looks, just the way these knobs are nice, just the feel and everything. It's very nice, very neat, very neat. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. I haven't been uploading videos as much as I should. I apologize. For some reason, I just haven't been in. I've been lazy for putting video. Well, I just have been lazy when it comes to uploading videos. I don't know. Sometimes I'm not always in the in the mood. I don't always feel like it. I'm not doing as much with tape recorders these days as I used to be. I've been getting more into some digital. Not digital audio, well, not high quality digital audio, let's put it that way. I've been getting into things like speech synthesizer. I don't have any like vintage speech synthesizer except that I ordered some linear predictive coding speech synthesis chips. But I've been getting into stuff like that, basically. I still like recorders, but I, one thing is I haven't been going to estate sales often like I used to. Because there's, as I probably mentioned in some other videos I've made, I was to the point of being becoming obsessive with going to estate sales every weekend. Even if I didn't feel like it, I was compelled to go. It was like probably an OCD thing. So I finally prayed for the Lord to basically deliver me from the desire to always go to his to the the power of always going to estate sales. And because of that, I haven't been going to them regularly since summer of 2012. I still very rarely go to one if it's if it's in town, but like I did acquire a rim drawer reel to reel recorder recently at an estate sale that I happened to see a sign for on the way home from taking my friend home, so I stopped there and got lucky. But anyway, one thing I greatly desire to do is to fix my wire recorders to so that they would record properly. And maybe I could ask for you guys' help. I'm figuring, and this video is getting so much longer now. I'm figuring it's only a problem with there not being enough voltage. I have a couple of wire recorders. Well, I have three wire recorders, but one of them I'm able to record on fine. The standard business machines. But I have two others. A Webster Chicago 18-1. And a Steno by Crescent. And both machines I've replaced... Uh, most of the capacitors, or at least most of the non-electrolytics. And both machines will play back fine. And both machines, when put into record, and I put a meter on the bias, I get a frequency. One of them is 27 kilohertz. The other one is, um, was it 25 or was it more? Anyway, they're both giving out a high frequency bias. And they both give out a small voltage for both the erasing and the bias. But lo and behold, when it comes to actually recording, both machines don't erase, even though the erase head is good. The Webster Chicago kind of erases, but not fully. And the Crescent seems like it kind of tries, but really hardly erases anything at all. And both record distorted. The crescent is very distorted, and the bias voltage on it is extremely low. Like less than a volt, somewhere in the millivolt range, and it's supposed to be a lot higher than that. And in the Webster Chicago, its bias voltage seems acceptable. I think it's about a 3 or something like that volts, or I know its erase is, I think, 2 point something volts. And it isn't erasing at all, or it is hardly erasing, and it's also recording with distortion, although not as bad, I think, as the, not, not as bad as the Crescent. And on both bias oscillators, I put in capacitors that I tested as good on the cap meter, and, uh, you know, showing the value of the capacitors. And the thing is oscillating, but it's not putting out enough voltage, apparently. Even though I'm, so it's, it's, it's recording with lots of distortion, and it's, not fully erasing, and it's like that on both those recorders. Yet on the standard business machine's wire recorder, I measured its erase head voltage, and it was 1.9 volts, and it was erasing perfectly. 
and its bias voltage I think was only about six or so volts on the record head but it was recording perfectly so it's one of those strange things if anyone out there has some special experience with though with those wire recorders that has might possibly know what could be the cause as to why the voltage is not high enough the amplifier is getting enough voltage and the playback is just fine and the power of the amplifier, the amplifier's volume is just fine but something going on with the bias apparently isn't putting out enough voltage and no there's no trimmer or anything I can do to adjust it either so it's just mysterious it does not make sense so maybe someone out there knows and if someone out there knows if they could please tell me that would be great perhaps you could tell me through a comment or you could make a video and then tell it to me through a comment obviously I can't say PM me thanks to the advent of Google Plus or at least I don't know how to do PM through Google Plus if you can we used to be able to do those nice personal messages on the original YouTube comment system and then Google Plus came in and then it's just oh it's so annoying too now with the Google Plus I get notified about comments just fine and I could check those comments of course other things such as plus warning something along with the comments instead of the comments by themselves many times I get asked with the question and instead of having a little thing to reply right there whenever you go you know you click on that bell to check the Google Plus stuff and they don't have a thing to reply there so in order to reply I have to click on the comment which opens up a new window with the video itself then I gotta find the comment and then click reply I know Google and YouTube none of the, your, the people that work for Google and YouTube are going to watch this video the chances of any of you coming across this and especially getting this far into this boring video um, will none of you will see it so I ask this basically in vain unless someone out there does actually see this but listen it wouldn't hurt to put an option to reply to a comment right there when you click on the bell and you're checking a comment without having to open up the video in a new tab just to reply because that's really annoying I'd love to be able to reply right there just one click right by the comment that I see boom reply just like that I'd appreciate it YouTube and Google if you could do such a thing provided any of you people that work at Google or YouTube actually see this so I'm sure it won't be seen perhaps if I was Fred maybe or some other crazy popular YouTube guy maybe but anyway well now that this video has hit the 39 minute mark which is one of my favorite numbers for some reason uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see or you will see me and hear me through the tape of other vintage magnetic recording machines and I'd love to get a record cutter someday too. The reason why I don't collect record players like I do tape recorders is because I can't record on them, only play. But if I had a record cutting machine, that would be amazing.